Canto 1 Midway upon the journey of our life, I found myself within the forest dark. The straightforward pathway had been lost. Ah me, how hard a thing it is to say that was this forest savage, rough and stern, which in the very thought would use the fear. So bitter is it, death is little more. But of the good to treat which there I found, speak will I of the other things I saw there. I cannot well repeat how there I entered. So full was I of slumber at the moment in which I had abandoned the true way. But after I had reached the mountain's foot, at that point where the valley terminated, which had with consternation pierced my heart, upward I looked and I beheld its shoulders, vested already with a planet's rays, which leadeth others right by the every road. But after I had reached the mountain's foot, at that point where the valley terminated, which had with consternation pierced my heart, upward I looked and I beheld its shoulders, vested already with that planet's rays, which leadeth others right by every road. Then was the fear a little quieted, that my heart's lake had endured throughout the night, which would I had passed so piteously, and even as he who, with distressful breath, forth issued from the sea upon the shore, turns to the water perilous in gazes. So did my soul, that still was fleeing onward, turn itself back to re-behold the past, which never yet a living person left. After my weary body I had rested, the way resumed I on the desert slope, that the firm foot ever was the lower. And lo, almost where the ascent began, a panther light and swift exceedingly, which with what spotted skin was covered over. And never moved she from before my face. Nay, rather did impede so much my way that many times I to return had turned. The time was the beginning of the morning, and up the sun was mounting with those stars that with him were that time the love divine at first in motion set those beauteous things. So were to me occasion of good hope, the variegated skin of that wild beast, the hour of time and the delicious season, but not so much that did not give me fear a lion's aspect which appeared to me. He seemed as if against me he were coming with head uplifted and with ravenous hunger so that it seemed the air was afraid of him. And a she-wolf, that with all hungerings, seemed to be laden with her meagerness, and many folk had cause to live forlorn. She brought upon me so much heaviness, with a fright that from her aspect came, that I, this hope, relinquished of the height. And as he is who willingly acquires, and the time comes that causes him to lose, who weeps in all his thoughts and is despondent, even such made me that beast without in peace, which, coming on against me by degrees, thrust me back thither where the sun is silent. While I was rushing downward to the lowland, before mine eyes did one present himself, who seemed from long-continued silence hoarse. When I beheld him in the desert vast, Have pity on me, upon him I cried, whichever thou art, or shade, or real man. He answered me, not man. Man once I was, and both my parents were of Lombardy, and Mantuans by country both of them. Sub Julio was I born, though it was late, and lived at Rome under the good Augustus, during the time of false and lying gods. A poet was I, and I sang that just son of Anchises, who came forth from Troy, after that Ilion the superb was burned. But thou... Why goest thou back to such annoyance? Why climbest thou not the Mount Delectable, which is the source and cause of every joy? Now art thou that Virgilius, and that fountain, which spread abroad so wide a river of speech? I made response to him with bashful forehead. Oh, of the other poet's honor and light, avail me the long study and great love that have impelled me to explore thy volume. Thou art my master, and my author thou, thou art alone the one from whom I took the beautiful style that had done honor to me. Behold the beast for which I have turned back. Do thou protect me from her, famous sage, for she doth take my veins and pulses tremble. Be it behooves to take another road. Responded he when he beheld me weeping, if from this savage place thou wouldst escape, because this beast at which thou criest out 
suffers not any one to pass her way, but so doth harass him that she destroys him, and has a nature so malign and ruthless that never doth she glut her greedy will, and after food is hungrier than before. Many the animals with whom she weds, and more they shall still until the greyhound comes, who shall make her perish in her pain. He shall not feed upon either earth nor pelf, but upon wisdom and on love and virtue. Twixt Fultro and Fultro shall his nation be. Of that low Italy shall he be the savior, on whose account the maid Camilla died, Euryalus, Turnus, Nisus of their wounds. Through every city shall he hunt her down, until he shall have driven her back to hell. There from whence envy first did let her loose. Therefore I think and judge it be for thy best to follow me, and I will be thy guide, and lead thee hence through the eternal place, where thou shalt hear the desperate lamentations, shalt see the ancient spirits disconsolate, who cry out each one for the second death. And thou shalt see those who contended are within the fire, because they hope to come, whenever it may be, to the blessed people. To whom then, if thou wishest to ascend, a soul shall be for that then I more worthy. With her at my departure I will leave thee. Because that emperor who reigns above, in that I was rebellious to his law, wills that through me none come into his city. He governs everywhere, and there he reigns. There is his city and his lofty throne. O happy he whom thereto he elects. And I to him, poet, I thee entreat, by the same God whom thou didst never know, so that I may escape this woe and worse. Thou wouldst conduct me there where thou hast said, and that I may see the portal of St. Peter, and those thou makest so disconsolate. Then he moved on, and I behind him followed.